Hello, hi friends, happy Tuesday. My name is Allison Dolke and I am so glad you're here. You have found yourself at the dreaming table. I will be really honest and say that a hundred times I want to say the dreaming tree. Okay, Ryan's here now with some sick crooked. He's coming in a minute. Sorry. It's like your own Blair Witch Project. <laughs> we are broadcasting live on YouTube and on Facebook, and I'm so glad to see you. So I'm going to get started quickly because we changed our time from 8 to 8.30, so we have a limited amount of time. And if you have watched me live for any amount of time, you know I'm not the best at being short. <laughs> Hi, friends. So glad you're here. Hi, Kaylee. I think I have an unwatched Marco from you. Okay, that was friend guilt. I'm on it tomorrow. <laughs> on it. Oh, how are you guys? Chrissy, I'm honored to bring you to my table, and I really need your family to actually come to my table. It would be amazing, like all the kinds of amazing. Ashley, I'm so glad you're here. I am still pretty emotional from your message, so I just want you to know if my response seems short is because I was very emotional. I think I want you right here. Right here. So you might be wondering what the heck it is you have stumbled upon. Um, this is a dreaming table. So Brian and I, first of all, my name is Allison Dolphy. You know that because my name is an extra thing. I'm not used to that. This is my husband, Brian. We so, yes. have been going live every Tuesday night for a couple of years now. Fur? Helping fur? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a couple of years now. <laughs> helping people dream big, work smart, make a profit, and change their world and the world of people around them. And it has been a joy and an honor. Um, but... Um, last week we did our very last live training over there and now we're training over here training. I don't see, I can't, it's not, it's not really what it is. Talking around the table. It is. Um, so first of all, for all of you who were confused or concerned or thought we were going somewhere, we're not going anywhere. I mean, except here, we're here, <laughs> we're not going anywhere. And, um, it didn't tell me you were on. It didn't. Well, because you're probably not following me. Are you sure? I follow you everywhere. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, you made me look my train of thought, baby. Anyways, we're still going to help you dream big, work smart, make a profit, and change the world. But also, we're going to help you do other things. Um, part of it became very training to me. It felt very much like training. And while there is good for that, what you guys loved the most and what you responded to the most was times when I got on and I just spoke from my heart. And that is what happens when you're at our table. Look at it. Don't touch it. Okay. I don't like it at all. I'm fixing it. Excuse me, people. Oh, man. She set all this up herself. And if you guys know us, you know that's not okay. Well, okay, it's a little better. I still don't like you it. have to scoot over there a little bit. Scoot over toward me. Where am I going to go? Right, Michigan. Okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyways, we're still going to help you do all those things, but in a less um, training-ish way and in a more life way. More like we would if you were sitting at our table, which is what you're doing now. I joked last week that you were sitting on our table and you really are sitting on our table. So thanks for being here. <laughs> we're so I'll take a here. picture and then y'all can, I'll post it later so you can see. Y'all say hi. Wave. Wave. <laughs> Okay, we'll post that later. So the whole point is we want to share with you what we did share around the table, which is business and work and profit and good work, but also other things, um, marriage and family and all the things worth fighting for. So um, a little less training-ish and a little more let's have a chat at the table. Is that cool with y'all? So tonight we are going to talk about the power of our minds. So if you were here last week or if you watched last week's video, we talked a little we got you guys started on the process of starting to dream a little bit, which I promised would be challenging for some of you. And I bet that it was. Um, I also promised that it would be a downloadable and there hasn't been one yet. And that is going to happen this week. So excuse me for my false promises, but they're coming to fruition this week. But in the meantime, one of the biggest hangups to being able to dream, hi Becky, is our minds 
our minds get in the way of really good work and really good influence. And they tell us that our minds tell us that we can't do things that we actually can do. And so tonight we are going to talk about the power of our minds and the power of the lies that we believe, because too often, more often than not, we are in a habit of believing something that isn't true at all. So if you think that this would benefit anybody, this absolutely overflows into your business, into your family, into your life, into your marriage, into your motherhood, into your fatherhood. If you're a father, it absolutely does. So if you know somebody who you think, I think that they would benefit from hearing this tonight, give them a little, tag them, share, whatever you want to do. So are you all ready? I, okay, you know, I used to be a teacher. And so one of the things I do think you need is a piece of paper <laughs> or notes on your phone or whatever. It's kind of my thing. It's kind of my thing. Um, we are going to talk about lies tonight and we are going to talk about how we battle lies with truth. So I want to talk first a little bit about a lie that I believed that almost sabotaged my business. So we have been doing business for 11 years now. For 11 years. Are you going to make fun of me the whole time? That's oh. just how I say four. Okay. He's such a freaking turd. <laughs> I'm going to say it like that forever, and I'm going to increase my accent. But forever is forever. It's not forever. But I didn't say forever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you listen okay, I here. I invited you. Anything you say that starts with F O R that you say. F -U -R. I invited you today. F U R to the table. She did invite me. I'm still not 100 percent clear why. So listen and pay attention, and okay. don't make fun of your wife on camera. Sorry, guys. Take two. Ready? Hi, guys. Oh my god. I'm kidding. He's so getting fired. Oh. So also. Jacket. Mm. So you weren't allowed to touch it. So also, if you think our marriage is perfect, that's a big fat lie. It's a constant choice of lying. Someone that is so freaking annoying mm. sometimes. And mm. I got nails just for you. And you love me too. You're <laughs> such a freaking jerk. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean, seriously, that's enough now. I'm, d I'm done. Okay. Anyways, I don't right? even know what I was saying. You were saying you invited me to the table. Yeah. Because. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. But don't, I don't. Don't throw yourself a pity party. I was trying to tell you a story about how a lie that I believed almost sabotaged my business. Mm. So, for several years, Great. not four years, see, for several years, <laughs> and you don't think I'm trying this to say This one's just not going to work. Four, it's fine. Uh, it's for, not gonna. for several years, I, I really believe this lie that the business I built and the success that we had was not because of anything that I did. And indirect sales, that can often be a, it's a thing people say sometimes. Like if you um, got in at the right time, right? Or if you, you just, Mostly it's if you got in at the right time. You got in at the right time. You just, you know, all the things were working. And so it wasn't really anything you did. It was just everything. It was good timing. Yeah, you got in at the right time. So that is incredibly discouraging, one, to hear. But when you hear a lie long enough and frequently enough, if you're not paying attention to the lies that you're hearing and you're not combating them with truth, you'll start to believe that those lies are true. And so for years and years, even though I never really said it, I really did believe that all of my success and the business that we had built really wasn't something that we had built, but was just good timing. And that is not a good lie to believe. I would bet that many of you have believed similar lies. It could be about success you could have, or it could be about failure that you've had. It could be about something that you think to be true about yourself as a spouse, as a wife, as a husband, as a mother, whatever it might be. Um, 
lies have incredible power over our lives. So I mentioned in the comments that one of the things that I've shifted the most over the past several months is my mindset. And honestly, I got called out. Um, really, Brian had been calling me out for years on my negative mindset. But sometimes you also need somebody outside of your like normal group of people. Well, you know how you can tell your kids something. Yeah, that's what a hundred like. times. And then some random person that leads their Sunday school tells them something and they come home and go, Dad, such and such said I should quit saying that I'm bad at math. Because I'm not really bad at math. I just haven't learned it all yet. You're like, wow, son. Hmm. That's what I've been saying for two years. Okay. Same deal. Yeah. I've been telling her for a long time. And she's like, whatever you have to say that. You're my husband. Right. Yeah. And then someone else told her. So, yes, I got a called out that I was talking about myself negatively and believing lies that were not true. And so I want to push you today, tonight, to maybe explore the fact that there are lies that you're believing about who you are, um, about who you're becoming that are not true. So, so many of you shared very openly on our post today about lies that you've believed. Um, but I asked Brian here and we're going to talk about some of those things. And one of the things I'm going to encourage you to do tonight is to just take a piece of paper and write a line down the middle of it. Like, I got a blank. I'll show you a blank piece of paper. Just literally a line straight down the middle of a piece of paper and start writing out on the left side, all the lies that you believe to be true about Whatever it is that you're believing lies about, it could be in your business, it could be about your leadership ability, it could be in your motherhood, it could be as a wife, as a husband, it could be, what's another? A lie that you're believing? Yeah. Um, I mean, anything that starts with, I'm not good at blank, or mm -hmm. I, I can't. don't deserve blank, or I can't blank, mm -hmm. or... I'm not as good at blank as such and such or whatever it might be. Any or, negative connotation that starts a thought. Or I can't manage. I've said that and believe that in my head many, many, many times in my life. Like I can't manage this business and being a good wife and being a good mom and leading all these people. Like I would say that to me. And maybe it's not something you're saying out loud. And maybe you are. Or may, it, it could just be something that you're thinking, that you're believing in your head over and over again. My encouragement to you tonight would be to write them out, to start writing out the things that you repeat to yourselves. And here's the deal. Maybe you're thinking, well, I don't believe that because here's what happened to me. Uh, I got called out on negative self-talk and not taking credit for things that I had done, like positive things that I had done. And my first reaction was utter shock. Like, the person that said it to me, I looked at him and said, what do you mean I'm talking negatively? I'm like the most positive person there is. Well, I think a lot of times we confuse humility with talking bad about ourselves. Oh, that's good. So like Allie would say, and I wasn't there when this happened, but I've been in that scenario with her many times with other people. And you know, sometimes we make excuses for reasons that we've been blessed in some way or you know if you drive a nice car someone that doesn't have as nice of a car might say wow it's a really nice car and you say well i got a really good deal on it like you have to justify mm -hmm. why you have something nice same yeah. thing with clothes women will say oh my gosh i love that sweater you're like oh my gosh i had a 50 percent off Got it for three dollars <laughs> yeah like you don't feel like you can't you can't just say thank you and take that blessing and yeah. accept it and ali in situations sometimes when she's talking about our business or being a mom or being a wife or whatever, she'll say, well, you know, they're like, Oh my gosh, you've been married 15 years and you're so young. And she's like, well, we got married and we just haven't messed up bad enough yet. Or not like it's going to end, but you know what I mean? Like you'll say like, well, we've just, you know, we've learned how to live with each other or no, it's okay to say like, thank you. We're really fortunate. We're really blessed. It hadn't been easy, but yeah, you know, it's to accept it versus make excuses for it all the time, almost yeah. anywhere we go. So I think sometimes we think maybe, oh, I don't, I don't have like negative self-talk or I'm not, there's not like lies that I'm believing. But part of the problem is sometimes the lies that we're believing have become so ingrained in us that they feel like truth. Yeah. 
And when a lie begins to feel like truth in your soul, that's when you're in trouble. That's when you're in a place where you're going to have to start to fight to get back out of it. And here's the thing. It's possible to change our mind. That's why I titled this Change Your Mind. You can literally change any single thing in your life, your business, your marriage, your family, your financial situation. You can change any single thing about your life by changing your mind. And that seems really ridiculous and that seems really simple and oh, doesn't that sound good? I know, right? But it's true. When we decide to change the way we think about something, to change what we believe is true about something, then those things in our life begin to change. Our budget is an example. I have for years and years and years. It sounds it's like someone's windy. whistling yeah, outside our house. Windy. And then they go something hit our door. And I was like, someone's breaking in. It's no, so it's windy. Hitting our house. For years, I, I don't want to say I hated money. I hated the idea of managing money because I believed this lie that I was not good at it. I believed the lie that I wasn't organized enough to be good at it, that I didn't have the discipline enough to be good at it. And I literally cringed at the thought of managing money. Well, sometimes the thing that we are fearful of or the thing that we don't enjoy doing, I think sometimes the Lord pushes us into like, well, you're just going to have to learn how to deal with these things. Um, and that's kind of what happened to us. We got in a situation because of our business where we learned that we have to manage money well. We have to figure out how to steward well what we've been given. And honestly, I think the biggest mindset shift for me was when I started to look at money as a game and as a tool. And a game sounds irresponsible. I don't mean it like that. I just mean it like if you're playing a game, you want to win, right? And you're playing with pieces on a board that are simply resources, right? They're just tools helping you to win. And when you start to look at money that way, it starts to change the way that you interact with it. And it starts to change the way you think about it. And so when I stopped telling myself that I couldn't be good at managing money, that I would never have a budget, that I would never like live response, like I, I believed all of those things for so long. But when I started to change the way I thought about it and I started thinking, okay, it's a game and it's a tool right? There are tools. Money is the tool. The entire thing is a game, right? I'm supposed to steward well what I've been given. I want to save. I want to invest. I want to allocate what needs to be allocated. I want to tell my money where to go. When I started to think of it like that, it literally changed my brain in a way that made me think about money in a different way. Do you have a story like that? I did not prep him for this at all. Where like you changed your mind to change your life? Oh yes, I have an idea. I think I know a story. I don't know if this is true, but I is this gonna happen like last week at church? You're like, you remember that story you tell all the time? I'm like, I have no oh, idea. Oh gosh, that was so painful. <laughs> <laughs> Go with it. We'll see where this one goes. No, okay. Um, talk about how you changed your mind about, and I think this is what happened. And if not, just say that's not what happened. And okay. we'll but talk about how you changed your mind about the way you viewed our marriage and our relationship. Give me some context. Like just in like what you learned about marriage and then you deciding, like what you learned about the crazy cycle and then you deciding, okay. I'm just going to change my mind. Is that true? No, it is true. Okay. But I didn't even context on what you were talking about. Did that help? I don't know if you were talking about our sex life or something. Oh, good like, God. Are we there yet with these people? No, just I'm kidding. So. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, do that what you will. I don't know. Um, I don't know where that's going. Okay. So I uh, read a couple of different books. I'm not going to, I won't reference them all because it's, there's, it's not just one or two, but uh, I started to get on this kick for a while to read marriage books and just try to figure out our marriage was good, but it still in my mind wasn't as good as it could be. And it wasn't what I really felt like we were called into. Like, I really, I don't know, like you guys know, Allison, if you don't take more for it, she's incredible. She's just absolutely ridiculously incredible in so many ways. And we would bicker and we would fight and I'd get mad and she'd get mad. And yeah, I don't know. And it was still overall very good, I would say. But there were times when we were like, what the heck are we doing? So I dove into a few different books. 
And it was probably the third or fourth or fifth book that basically, I mean, here's the thing about marriage books. There's some really good ones out there. There's a lot that aren't that great that have a bunch of old ideas wrapped into a new package or whatever it might be. But there's some core principles throughout most of them, the good ones that talk about putting your spouse before yourself. Right. We've all heard that. Sounds really easy. It's really hard to do in a heated moment. Right. But I finally read a book called Love and Respect. Really good book by a guy named Dr. Egrich. Um, it's really old. It's probably 30 or 40 years old. He's revised it a couple of times because just lingo wise and culturally, some things were irrelevant. But he talks about this crazy cycle where I get frustrated with her. Don't treat her how she deserves to be treated. Then she doesn't get treated like she deserves and she knows it and she treats me bad. And it's just this crazy cycle. Right. Well, it talks about loving and adoring your spouse and how regardless of how you feel them treating you, the only long term fix to get you where you need to be is to treat them the way that, you know, God's called you to treat them all the time. No, it's extreme. We can't always do that. I still fall off of this. But even when I'm not getting what I feel like I need from her to treat her like the adored princess of God that she is and not in a crazy spoiling her. Right. Like I'm not no. lavishly throwing gifts at her and all of that, no. but just treat her with the do what men would call respect that she deserves being my wife and mother of our children and all of that. And we took a trip, I don't know, probably two years ago. And before the trip, and I didn't tell her, I just said, I'm going to adore her this entire trip. I'm going to try to wait on her hand and foot. I'm going to open the door like I did when we first dated to everything. I'm not going to let her lift a finger if not necessary. And going into the trip, we weren't in like a really great place. We had had some fights and some bickering and we were actually looking forward to the trip to be a time where we were away from all the noise and trying to reconnect. But within two or three days of the trip, just a light switch turned on and she kind of asked me, what are you doing different? Like what's happening? And I just told her, I, I didn't know what I was going to get out of it. I'm not expecting anything back, but I just want to treat you like I feel like I'm supposed to treat you. And probably ever since then, and we've had our moments since then, mm -hmm. but I think as a whole, my mindset's all, I always try to be in this mindset of treating her exactly how she deserves to be treated, even when I'm not feeling the same way from her. And just that mind shift, just that change in my thinking about how I'm supposed to treat her, regardless of how I'm feeling treated, has turned into this thing where I'm treated even better than I deserve most of the time. So that was one of those places it took reading it over and over and then finally landing on a place that just connected with me in a book that connected with me. And it really did change. Are you still trying to find it? No, I got it. Um, it really just did change how I think about it and therefore how I treat her. And if, and it's even gotten to the point now where if she's not treating me how I feel I should be treated, it's probably because I lost sight of it at some point in the last day or two. So I know how to get off of it. I just go back and treat her that way even when she's frustrated and angry and whatever. And eventually it all comes back. That's good. So what would you say like the lie or the negative mindset would be about that like period of time? Just confirming that's what it's called. Say it again. What would you say like the negative mindset or the lie would have been that you believed about yourself as a spouse or even, even the negative, maybe the negative lie that you believed about me as you, your spouse and that's even. God, there were a lot. Part of it was, so this was just a couple few years ago at the most. Yeah. And if you guys know us or have followed us, you know, we have, you know, this successful direct sales business and all of these things. And Allie, I feel in a lot of ways, like she gets her bucket filled pretty regularly through affirmation from people saying, Oh my gosh, you're so good at this. And you know, you're a great teacher and a great leader. And I, essentially was kind of a stay-at-home dad. I mean, I help with the business stuff, but it's back stuff that, you know, you guys don't necessarily see. Taxes. Yeah, but stuff said. that you don't get people like emailing you saying, oh my gosh, you're doing such a yeah. good job. You know, no one does that. Nobody cares about our And taxes. so, um, I don't know. So part of me was believing this lie, like, okay, she's getting some affirmation from these other places. So she needs to really give me affirmation. Like she needs to be the person that's really feeding into me. And she was doing that at times but not always. And when right. she wouldn't, I felt like that was on her. So then I would treat her badly, not treat her badly, but I just wouldn't go out of my way to make her feel like a princess because I didn't feel like she was doing that for me. And then that starts this crazy cycle mm -hmm. of she's not feeling loved and cared for. And she's wondering where my head's at. And so then she can't be there for me. And then I'm not there for her. And it's just this continual crazy cycle. And so that was one of the lies. She needed to be there for me more 
constantly basically was what I thought. Yeah. And then what's the actual truth? The truth is that, I mean, without getting super theological, like we are one person, like God, when we took a vow and an oath together, I need to treat her and lift her above myself constantly because ultimately, and it sounds really easy and it's a cool bumper sticker, but ultimately if I'm treating her the way she deserves, she's going to treat me the way I deserve. And I know it's really easy to say, and it doesn't happen overnight, but it's got to be a mind shift. It's got to be a, whatever I get from her is more than enough, but I just need to make sure she's loved and adored in all the ways that, that she feels loved and adored. Her love languages, words of affirmation, acts of service, those things. And that's love language. That's a whole nother thing, but it's yeah. part of it. So you get the idea. There's a million things that you can believe a lie about. It could be about your business. It could be about your leadership. It could be about your marriage. It could be about your ability to parent well. But I want to encourage you that most of those things that have a negative connotation in your mind are absolute lies. And I truly believe that one of the ways the enemy keeps us from living into our calling, living, walking towards the dreams that we have in our hearts is by planting lies in our brain that we, that we seed so down deep that they start to grow and we start to believe those things is truth. And so tonight I want you I want you to call them out. Here's the thing. You cannot battle an enemy that you do not know. And if you are not aware of the lies that you're believing, how are you going to combat them with truth? It's going to be ridiculously hard for you to change your mind when you can't even see that what you're believing about yourself or about the way that you're living is completely a lie. Another lie that I believed for years and years and years was that I did not have the ability to lead a team, to lead leaders, and to parent my kids well. I did not feel, and that's the key word, feel. I did not feel that I had what it took to do all those things. And the problem is we often don't feel a certain way at all. What we actually have to do is recognize that the lie is that I can't manage a team and lead leaders and parent my four kiddos well. Well, that's just, that's a lie. And when I start to recognize that as a lie, I get to then turn the page and say, that's the lie. The truth is that I was called and equipped not only to be the mama to these four kids, but also to lead the people that are on my team, to encourage and equip the women that come into my path. What's so funny about all of this is for years, I've told this story a lot of times, but in one of my kind of down years where I felt like my job, quote unquote, in direct sales wasn't good enough, like the job that was paying our mortgage and paying our bills, I felt like I remember having this conversation with God like, I really like wanted to be in women's ministry. Like, you know, this doesn't feel like good enough work to me. (laughs) And I think about, it makes me laugh now because I can see clearly on the other side of it. But some of you may be in that spot where you may be feeling like the work that you are doing isn't significant work. And here's what I'm here to tell you today. The work that you are doing, wherever it is, it might be stay-at-home momming. It might be doing a nine-to-five. It might be in a job that you don't love right now. It might be running and growing a business. Whatever it is, where you are now, you have everything that you need to walk through it. You have everything that you need to do it well. But you have to change your mind about what's true and what's not true. It's going to be impossible for you to take action and steps on your dreams if you cannot identify the lies in your mind and replace them with truth. Here's what I know about my motherhood. I am not a perfect mom and neither are you. And I don't know one. And when we start to believe that perfect moms exist, also a lie, then we start to feel isolated and we start to feel ill-equipped. 
I'm also not a perfect leader. I am not a perfect business owner. I am not a perfect spouse. And if I start to believe for a minute that any of those things exist, if there's a perfection in one of those areas, then I will start to feel like a failure and I'll start to believe that I'm not equipped to do those things. But all of those things are lies. One of the reasons I asked you to share the lies that you believed is because I truly believe that the enemy, that resistance, that whatever you want to call it, wants us to feel alone. That there is this isolation that comes when we start to believe lies. This isolation that says you are the only person who treats your spouse like crap sometimes. You're the only one that yells like that. You're the only one that loses your temper with your kids. You're the only one who lets her business go to the side sometimes. That's what isolation does. I don't think you say you're the only. I think you say you're the worst. Maybe. And then in the responsibility that you've been given, you feel like you have to hide it because you have to put a face on Right. And then that compresses it and then that mm-hmm. makes it worse. And then it just festers and, you know, yeah. it just gets worse and worse. But what's what the actual truth is, is that when we come to the table and, and that's what I love about when we do retreats or when people are here at dinner, even there's nothing for you to hide behind. And I want to do our best to make this a place that you can't hide behind. I realize that you are on the other side of the screen and we are on the other side of the screen. It makes it really easy to hide. But I think the whole reason we wanted this to be at our table is because it's so much harder to believe a lie when other people are being honest about the lies they believed and are believing in their lives. It's really easy to believe lies when you think it's just you. When you feel ill-equipped, but you look at other people and you think, well, they have what they need. That's not true. Actually, they have what they need and you have what you need, but it's not true for you to think, well, she has what she needs, but I don't have what I need. And that's a lie that prevents us from moving forward. It prevents us from growing great businesses, great families, great marriages, So my challenge to you tonight is to write out all your lies. Like, I want you to write them out. Write them out. Acknowledge the lie that they are. And then I want you to draw a line down the middle of the paper, and I I want you to start writing truth. In place of each one of those lies. In place of each one. I started to write. I just started to do this when we were talking. This is what Ali would do. I'm not good at managing at managing money. I'm not a great spouse. I can manage my I can't manage my business and my babies at the same time. I'm not a good leader. So the truth to that would be you are good at managing money. You just need to try harder. No. Or, that's not what I would say. What would you say to that one? If, I'll I'll do this one though. If the lie is I'm not good at managing money, I would say my truth is that money is just a tool. There you go. That money management is just a game and that I have everything that I need to win at that game. And if I don't have everything I need at that, if you're thinking, well, I don't have everything. I need. If you don't have everything you need to win at that game, there are more tools for you to put in your toolkit so you can win at that game. I'm not good at managing money. That is a lie. The truth is I have everything that I need to win at the game of money. Money is just a tool, period. Um, you answer that one. I was going to answer it for you, but you answer that one. That I'm not a great spouse. Yeah, I don't know what you're gonna say. Oh, you want to hear what I'm gonna say? Um, the, it's all true. Well, so but know. also, here's the thing. This is what's important. I could let him answer this. I could let him tell tell the truths, but it it doesn't necessarily change my mind. He tells me all the time that I'm a great spouse. What I have to do is I have to start to believe the truth of what I'm called to be as a spouse. So if I say the lie now, is- she says that, guys, continue to speak oh, that yeah. over your wife. Yes, but I'm speak also it saying- until they believe it. Yes. But they do have to believe it. But I'm also That's saying, all. women, take your stance and start to, start to, start to proclaim the truth over what you know to be true about you. So if the lie is, I'm not a good spouse, the truth is that I was called and chosen to be a woman of God for this man. 
for this one right here. And then I have everything that I need to be everything that he needs for me. And then all he asks of me is respect. Like I can change. And touch. touch. That's a touch. Um, If y'all know about love languages, that's mine. He would like to be touched. (laughs) Another lie. I can't manage my business and my babies at the same time. Oh, it's such a big fat lie. And it's a lie that I believe for a long, long time. The truth, I was absolutely called and equipped and born at this time in history where I would be a woman working from home, building a business that would not only change my life, but would change my children's lives and would change the lives of countless other women that I get to the honor to lead. It will not look perfect, but I am more than qualified more than equipped to stand in that position and do both well at the same time. Now, here's the thing. I can already like, even sometimes as I start to proclaim a truth, the lies start to creep in because that's the way the enemy works. Like, yeah, but you can't do both well at the same time or yeah, but like, you're not always going to be well. You sound arrogant right now. You should back off. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like all of the things. No, I was absolutely. And honestly, your truths should sound arrogant. That was something we struggled with early on. Like when we started kind of naming this and understanding yes. this, we would be like, no, I am good at that. And I can be good. And then you're like, God, that sounds arrogant. I can't say that out loud. But then you're like, no, it's okay to say that. That's what the enemy wants. He doesn't yeah. want you to say that out loud. Yeah. And he doesn't want, he doesn't want you to think you can say it out loud. And that's a total crock of crap. Like not only me saying these things out loud, but I need you to say them out loud. I need you to proclaim the truth to say, no, I that's not true. I I was called and equipped. I was born at this time in history, at in this exact place to do this thing right now. It doesn't mean it's easy, but can I do it well and 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 honor both things? Yes, absolutely I can. And anytime, remember this too, anytime you're dealing with good and bad good and evil, whatever you want to call it. It's okay to proclaim arrogant truth over who you are and what you are and what you're supposed to be. That doesn't mean this isn't some like name it, claim it gospel. We're not saying we're going to be billionaires. Yeah. That's not, I don't believe it's about anything monetary. I don't believe it's about anything of maybe this, you know, of this world. But I do think that when she says I'm called to be his spouse and I'm the one created at this exact time to do this and to treat him well and to love and respect him and all of that. None of that has to do with anything with money or worldly success or any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, You can be as arrogant as you want to be when it comes to being the spouse you're supposed to be, the mother you're supposed to be, the leader you're supposed to be, the influencer, the servant, all of those things, because those are completely internal and those are what you are supposed to be now where you have to be careful when you get into the lies someone posted earlier i'm never going to get ahead of these bills if you start to speak truth over that and in place of saying i am going to get ahead of these because this is a game and these are tools and i'm going to do it that's great but if you say no because i'm going to be a gazillionaire one day and i'm going to have a rolls royce and i'm going to have all of this for me i don't think that's what it's supposed to be no because i don't think it's supposed to be material things or uh, if that makes sense so so be arrogant in the things that are internal and the things that you are called to do. Cause I think you can speak those truths into life. Well, and here's the third piece. And this could maybe be the second piece is that not only do you acknowledge the lies that you believed, you replace them with truth and then you back them with scripture. If you're a believer and if you're not, then you just stand on your truth, I guess. But if you are a believer, then you go to God's word and you say, okay, what, what says like, where is the promise that, that I am a good spouse? Like, and you go and you search and you start to write scripture to back up everything that you're proclaiming is truth. So you're not only standing on your own truth, but you're standing on the word of God on top of that. And you're proclaiming that over your life day after day after day. And when you start to change your mind one day at a time, that's when you start to change your life. But the biggest hurdle for some of you is going to be identifying the lies that you're believing. If you're having trouble and you're saying, no, like I'm, I'm like, I'm great. I'm about to talk positive myself all the time. Like I'm encouraging other people. I'm like, 
because that's where I was. I'm not going to lie. That's where I was. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm the bomb when it comes to like. I thought that's what you were going to do. I feel good. <laughs> I got you. I got you, babe. No, like, I, but I, I was like, no, I'm like, there's like no negative self-talk. I'm like. Well, I think sometimes we think, because people say be positive, right? Like, yeah. you know, put that positivity out there and energy and, and not that some of that's not true, but I think sometimes we positive everybody else to try to make up for what we're negatively oh, talking about yeah. in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we still feel horrible when we go yeah. to bed at night. And it's because that's we're true. not, we're giving all this positive, but we're not allowing ourselves to see the truth that we're supposed to be speaking over our own lives. Another lie that I know a lot of you are struggling with, um, that I've struggled with, and if we like believe the fact that nobody else struggles with it, then it's a bigger lie. Everybody struggles with this. I'm not a good leader. Um, I love all of you like living this direct sales, business building, empire world. It is hard, and it is scrappy, and it is the most rewarding thing. And sometimes it's frustrating because not everybody understands it. And then most of the time, some of you who started a business like for shoe money or target money or whatever, maybe to stay home, whatever, are suddenly in this position where you are leading people. You are leading other women. You are in a situation where you are like expected to lead other people. And this lie starts to creep in that you're not a good leader. And I want to tell you right now that that's one of the biggest lies. Because when you start to believe that you don't have what it takes to lead, it doesn't just affect you, and it doesn't just affect your spouse, and it doesn't just affect your kids or your family. It affects countless other people. So what happens is you say or start to believe, I'm not a good leader, so I'm just not going to really, like, I'm just going to do the bare minimum or I'm just going to, like, slide out of this influence. I need you to know and understand that you being in a leadership position is not an accident. It's not something that was just a fluke. It's not something that you just fell into. It's something that you worked for. It's something that you encouraged other people towards. And I promise you, if you will look back at your life, you will start to see areas where you were being prepared for this. And social media has a way of making us feel ill-equipped. It has a way of comparing us with other people. It has a way of us looking at like, but I'm not her or I can't be him like I I couldn't ever lead like that you're not supposed to lead like that you are supposed to lead the way you are supposed to lead and we get so wrapped up in the fear and the lie that we're not a good leader that we stop leading and when you stop leading it doesn't only affect you but it affects countless other people you want to know what the truth is? You have all that you need. You have the stories of your own failures and successes. You have your own journey through your business. You have other things in your life that you've walked through that you know what? You're just honestly holding on to that you're not letting anybody else see because they hurt. Or maybe you haven't dealt with them or maybe you don't want people to know. That is that place of isolation. When we start to open up and just be honest, look, let me tell you something about a leader. Leaders are not perfect and leaders do not have their crap together. Okay. That's a, those are lies. So if you think your leader is perfect and has their crap together, it's a lie. Leaders are constantly evolving. Ugh, I read my most favorite quote ever, maybe today that said, becoming is better than being. Expound on that. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't ever want to get stuck being. I want to constantly be becoming. And that is what leadership is. That's all that it is. It's a constant one foot in front of the other, taking one more step, doing one more thing, 
figuring out one more way, encouraging one more person. It's not a formula. It's not a system. It's not this super like, it's simply you becoming the best version of you. And people get caught up and stuck. Better version of you. Yeah, a better version of you. Never the best. Well, and that's why it's always becoming. Like, I don't ever want to be at the place where I'm like, I'm just being. I want to be constantly becoming a better version of myself. And that's what you should want to. So I don't want you to believe the lie that you're not a good leader. You are a good leader. You've been equipped with what you need and you can constantly become better. Um, And you are not supposed to be like somebody else and your leadership is not supposed to look like somebody else. And that's the same for your marriage. It's the same for your family. It's the same for your health. It's the same for everything. Your financial situation, whatever lie you're believing, identify it, write it down. You cannot fight an enemy that you don't know. But when we start to identify, here are the lies, here are the things that are holding me back, here are the things that are keeping me from going to the next place, that's where we have to start. And then we start to replace those lies with truth. And then we start to back that truth with scripture. And then you tell yourself the truth every single day. On the days when you feel like the lies are true, you tell yourself the truth a hundred times more. And what happens when we change our mind? about who we are, about who we're becoming, about what we're capable of, about what we're capable of doing and being, we start to change our life. And really, that's what the table's about. Being honest with who you are, pressing into who you're becoming. Do you want my final thought? I'd love it. (laughs) Couple things. I mean, I had like four or five things I wanted to finish with, but... I didn't know even know if she was going to give me a chance, so I didn't know. No, I'll just say this. So because of the world we currently all live in, in the social media driven world, this you have instant access to the best minds and the worst minds and the most deserving minds and the most undeserving minds in the entire world of seeing what they're doing and how they're influencing and all of those things. Be very careful with who you're letting speak into your life. Now, it's really easy for us to say, well, I follow all of these people, but I only really listen to this one and this one and this one. If you're letting them in and you're reading their stuff and you're going down that path, you're allowing them to speak into your life regardless of whether you know it or not. Mm-hmm. So That's just very be true. very careful. I saw someone post earlier that I cut the negative friends out. That was my New Year's resolution or something along those lines. Um, That's really smart. It's we had someone pretty recently reach out to us and say that they were kind of cutting a lot of the negativity out of their life and they found themselves feeling very lonely because they cut out all the people that were negative and they didn't really have anybody left, but they were starting over and they were looking for more positive influences and that's okay. Honestly, there was a, you can look it up and don't, I don't know the reference, so I can't tell you. So just count this as false if you want to, but there was a study done, I think it was in 2010 and it was, it was a, Ivy League study like Yale or Harvard or somebody, but they did this like five-year study on the happiest societies in the entire world. And obviously you would think of America, we have the biggest economy, right? France, they have, they're French, right? They have the coolest, prettiest language. Italians, they have Italian food every day. They don't even call it comfort Mm. food. They just call it food. Mm. Why aren't they happy, right? But they did the study (laughs) of all the happiest places in the world. And what's funny is, Study after study after study, there have been so many of these. More often than not, and almost always, it's these very secluded tribes. The one I read, it was this Aboriginal tribe in um, Australia. And everybody in the tribe felt like they had a purpose. Everybody had a job. Everybody was giving to the society as a whole. And they were completely cut off from the outside world. They were completely independent, completely off the grid. And they did a survey of how many people there were a few hundred people in this tribe. And on a hundred scale, everybody rated like a 95 or higher on how they felt that they had purpose, Mm -hmm. how they felt they had community, how they felt they had people that would look out for them, all of these things that in our modern era just doesn't exist anymore very often. And most often, right? So just be very careful. The people that you're listening to, the people you're reading, the people that you're letting influence your life, whether you know it or not, they're influencing you in the direction that they lean toward. Yeah. 
And even though so many people that we follow, it seems like they're doing everything right. And it seems like they're great and all of those things. Just be very careful, dig in a little farther and, and truly listen to and follow the people that you feel like are inspiring you and lifting you up because that has such a huge influence on who you are. Ali and I, and I mean, be careful about this one too. And these two, because we didn't have the greatest day today. We had a really good morning. This afternoon kind of went amiss. I questioned her on, today was a work day. I questioned her on kind of some of the things we did this afternoon <clears throat> work day. She had a little myth. I went to TJ Maxx. That I questioned her on our work hours and what she did. And so, and it took us a little bit, but we talked about it and we're good. But just know that the more people you let influence you, which in the world we live in, is hundreds if not thousands of people, every one of us. Just make sure to cut out the ones. The minute you see the post or the thread or the blog post or whatever it might be that it's not what you line up with, just unfriend them, unfollow them, get rid of it because that's not something that you need to wonder about every time you click on their stuff or every time that they post. Well, them. it's just kind of like that idea of – uh, I don't know why I'm bringing this up. I just don't have a better reference. Like, like – pornography you can't unsee things right you can't take things out of your brain either. she's referencing this because we do an orientation on yeah, where we <laughs> teach people <laughs> good can you explain yourself can you explain your wife we do an orientation where we have to talk about these five or six awful things yes. that can take control of your mind and pornography yeah. is one of them and this week for the first time she always makes me talk about it this week for the first I time always make him talk about it because I had to leave the room and deal with a leader situation. She had to talk about it. So talk. that's why it's on her mind. I have to talk about why we don't let our leaders look at pornography. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, but one of the things I said, and that I believe is true, is you can't unsee things, right? right? There's things you cannot unsee that become seared in your brain. But it's true about words. It's true about um, things that we're consuming on social media, too. And we take it really lightly. And we have to guard our minds so carefully. And so I know that social media is not pornography well i guess in some aspects i mean in some ways it is. Yeah. like it's not in my role but it's i guess it is if it's cases. bad yeah yeah it attacks you the same way because you feel like you need it you feel like you want it yeah. you can secretly read and follow whoever you want yeah. because of the instant access we have on our phone so it's almost just as bad in some ways yeah so i just i say that to just say to guard your mind and guard your mind in a way that there are things you can't unread and there's things that you can't forget and there's things that will forever have an impact on you. And so it is important that we guard who we follow because they can change our mind without us even really knowing it. And so it's really, really important. So. Yep. That's exactly right. That's all I had. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for hanging out. Literally, this is our dining room table. This is our dining room this. table. This is our favorite place in the entire house. Cause this is when, if you guys don't know, we have people over pretty often. I mean, at least once a week, usually yeah. sometimes multiple times in a week. And this is the place our daughter just texted us from upstairs and said, when you get done, can you come up and talk to me? This is the real world, people. The real world. I'm going to unfollow her right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was but, but this is our table, and this is the place that we feel the most comfortable. It's one reason we changed over to this and kind of changed the name of it. And Allie's done a few previous videos in the last year at this table, and she's always said, I just feel better when I'm sitting at the table. This is just – this is our place. So thank you guys for coming to our place and hanging out with us. So a couple of things that we're going to talk about over the next few weeks at the Dreaming Table. Um, I really want to dive into business budgets. Um, it's something I'm passionate about. It's something that I know that not a lot of people have and not a lot of people are working from. And obviously our expertise is in the direct sales world, but maybe we can touch on some other things too. But we have a huge passion for helping you understand how to set up a business budget so you can make a profit year over year and like really start to see the fruits of your labor. It's, it's just a game and it's one that we want to make sure you have tools for. We're going to talk about that. We're going to dive into some more dreaming, do some goal setting. We do 12 week goals. We never do year goals. And so we want to talk through some of that, what that looks like. Um, we're going to talk through um, some family branding stuff that you guys asked a lot about on social media. When we went off and did a family branding trip with our kiddos and, that we still need to finish, but we want to talk a lot about. So we have a lot to talk about. Anything you really want to talk about in the coming week? Like that you like really on your heart that you want to share? I just put them on the spot. Man. I'm sorry. You don't have to answer. I right? was just give me a second. No. no. No, I think what we're talking about right now, like this is yeah. I mean, our favorite thing. If you guys don't know, we do some marriage retreats. We're actually doing one this weekend. 
um, we sat down today for about two hours and just hashed through. So we've done them before. So we kind of know what to expect, but every time we tweak it a little bit, depending on the group that's coming in. And it's one of my favorite times when we sit down and plan it because it's, it is work for us. It's work, and it's but a it's lot. not work. Like it's, and it's something that we don't make any money on. We actually have not yet even broken even. We lose money on, but it's something we love to do. And yeah. we, because of where we've been in our marriage, we've been married. It'll be fifteen years this this year, guys. Like old. We're super old people. Like I'm getting gray hairs. Watch out! Oh, I have but so many gray hairs. But it fires me up. Like it's something that when we sit down and plan it. The money doesn't matter. The budgets don't matter. I want people to feel loved and adored. And I want them to sit around this exact table and walk away. I want them to leave our house on a Sunday afternoon better than they walked in on a Friday or Saturday morning. Yeah. And I want them to be better spouses for each other. I want them to be better parents of their kids. I want them to be better leaders in their community. And just the all the work that goes into it is worth it for the one person that leaves and texts us or messages afterward and said, thank you guys so much. Like I'm going to be better moving forward because of this. So anytime we start talking about couples and the spouse that I need to be to her and that she is to me and all of those things, it fires me up because those are things that I don't know. You just can't put a price on. Heather Pratt, you are a doll. Is that what she sent you? Yes. I saw that you got mail from her. Today. Look, I didn't know that's what it was. Heather sent me a, just today I got it a necklace and I, I think the timing is perfect Heather she said I missed your birthday and Christmas and New Year's but I'm sending it to you like it says dreamer yeah isn't that cool that's so cool it's like awesome look it says dreamer I mean you can't really see it but that's what it says I love it I like immediately got out of the box you're the best I love you thank you Anyways, thank you guys for joining us at our table. I can't wait to talk to you next week. We'll be live at 8.30 Central. Um, we're going to try to go 30 minutes. Is it impossible? I don't know. I don't know. You go on those tangents where you start preaching and I don't know. We're always going to shoot for 30 minutes. We're gonna the shoot. fact that we're under an hour right now is saying something. Yeah, that's Under true. an hour is rare for us. That's so. rare. Here we go. Book so. an hour. We'll try to be 30 minutes. We'll try to How about 30. that? Um, thank y'all for joining us. We'll be back again live next week. Um, talking more about all the things that we would talk about at our table. Things that make your business better, your marriage better, your family better, your life better. Um, we believe in you. And I want you and encourage you and challenge you. I challenge you to tackle those lies this week. Replace them with truth and start to speak them over yourself day after day after day. Hey, and here's my last thing on that. Okay. And this is it. I, I'm reading a Bible plan right now. And I think you read it today, right? Where it was just talking about how Job gave the devil a blueprint yeah. for the ways to attack mm -hmm. him. So this is a talk that I had with our daughter tonight before we went to bed. I had never, I've read Job multiple times. We did a study on Job. I didn't realize in the first three chapters of Job, because of Job's fears that he had vocalized multiple times and had anxiety about, mm. the devil had a blueprint for how to jump into his life, right? So. What we believe is the devil cannot hear our thoughts, but he can hear our spoken word, right? So when we vocalize the things that we're anxious about, the things that we're worried about, the things that can literally creep in and eat at us, when even when we're joking with people and saying, well, I hope that doesn't happen, or good Lord, you know, God help us if that happens, those kinds of things are giving the devil a blueprint for how to attack us. Yeah. So be so careful. You're, I mean, biblically we know your words have the power of death and life. Mm -hmm. Right. And so many times we think that's big situations. Like we think when I say something like, Oh gosh, my son's never going to do blank or he's never going to pass the test in blank. She'll even call me out and be like, don't speak that evil mm -hmm. or don't do that. Cause that's death. We don't speak that. Those are obvious ones. The ones that aren't as obvious are speaking about our anxiety, speaking about the things that worry us and that's literally giving the enemy a blueprint for how to attack us. So just be very careful. This week, if nothing else, try to not say anything that starts with, I'm worried about blank, or I hope blank doesn't happen, or never will blank. You know, just the nevers and the I don't think and the, all those things. Be so careful of that. Because literally when we're speaking evil, we're speaking negativity, or speaking anxiousness, that stuff is giving the devil a blueprint for how to attack us. So just be so careful about that. Mm -hmm. Be positive. 
speak positive, speak life into other people's lives, especially your spouse and your kids. And I promise you, it will be better than yeah. if you didn't. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. Seriously, it's a joy that you're hanging out with us for an hour. So we love you. Um, we can't wait to chat with you next week. Hang out at the table. So we'll talk to you then. See you guys. Bye.